Dysmorphic Disorder. How's it going, guys? Thank you for listening to my speech. So I'll do two truths and a lie. I speak Vietnamese. I lost weight for the month of March, and I have two birds. You guys can comment down below which one do you guys think is the truth and the lies. So I don't speak Vietnamese. I used to speak when I was a kid. This has nothing to do with the speech, by the way. I was yo-yoing for the month of March, and I have these birds that I practiced my Toastmaster speech <laughs> with. <laughs> these are questions for you guys as well uh, what are things that you do for yourself as well as other people what insecurities do you have how many are happy with the way that you look in general and I was thinking that um, your body is the greatest gift that you could have it's your vehicle, it's your tool, it's your representation your avatar it's what you other people see of you one day before they meet you and I think how you look can influence how you feel and I was just recalling back to uh, last spring and last summer that I, I was really on point I was really into self-development and I would like to get back to the place where I could be gobsmacked with how I look and how I feel I think everybody has insecurities and I, I have them as well, whether they're the bags underneath my eyes, my black heads, my gray hairs, but maybe it's better to focus on the positives such as my health, my intelligence, or maybe my charm. I was also wondering uh, why do I have a body dysmorphic disorder or body dysmorphia and I think that when I was a kid I used to be in survival mode I, I was relatively small and in upstate New York it's not very diverse so I, I kind of got bullied when I was a kid so as soon as I could get into high school I got bigger I got stronger I got smarter. When I was in elementary school, I used to fight a lot. Elementary, middle school, I always got into fights. It's better to, you know, try and communicate your way out of it, but sometimes you cannot. So what is body dysmorphia? It's worrying about flaws of your appearance. Sometimes they're not noticeable to other people. For example, my dominant side, my right side, it's bigger than the left side. Probably because I use it more. That makes sense, right? I could be obsessing over these things that uh, don't really matter. But in the back of my mind, uh, these are things that I could try to change. Because it's more of a lifestyle that I would like to live. Because I always told my mom that, you know, I'm not a tall guy, but I could be a bigger guy, you know. So it's something that... I could try to be good at and also for my friends as well that I could try to teach them uh, how to be fit or how to be healthy and I could go into like sleep and diet and tracking your macros as well there's something called the monk mode where <laughs> you do all of these things in the beginning of the year and it's so much work that it, it's hard to uh it's hard to maintain, it's hard to get up to the peak and to stay up there as well. But if you could track, for example, your time, your macros, even your finances, that uh, you would see trends in the things that you're doing and it's all a learning process on uh, what you're doing, the things that you're doing right, the things that you're doing wrong. I noticed that with my friends, they like to go out and eat in a social setting sometimes for example they would ask me to drink or eat a bunch of junk food and sometimes i would have to decline and i would kind of feel bad because i do want to do those things too <laughs> if you gave me a pot of brownies i would eat the whole thing so that that's why i don't even buy them uh, whenever i go to the grocery store i try to stay on the outside aisles 
whenever I go to my friend's place, they have like cookies and stuff, and it's just like, oh, <laughs> it's hard to say no to it. But for the medical diagnosis, it, it could cause somebody to be anxious, to be have discontent for themselves, to have compulsive or depression. And I'm not medically diagnosed for these things. And then also, I was looking up on Google and they said that if you wanted to treat it, you could get therapy, uh, you could get on medication. But in, in my opinion, it, it's something that you would have to uh, try and fix yourself through, you know, audio books or, or learning or trying to habit stack. So just say, for example, for walking, if you walk for 10,000 steps a day, it's probably three to 400 calories. So I imagine if you could do it every day, every day, uh, you, you could have a stack it with going out for a hike to see nature, listen to audio book. You could go out with friends. If it's too sunny, you could go to Walmart or the mall, something like that. There's a quote that says, uh, a coach, a teacher, a doctor, a psychiatrist, they don't make you better, you do. And they can give you information, but it's up to you to put in the work and to have the desire to improve and to be the best version of you can. Count your blessings and have uh, physical and mental health. And for self-development, it's, it's one of the things that you could do to, to stay on point because uh, throughout life, <laughs> your, your targets are moving. Because I, I could work out in the gym for a couple hours versus now I'm working out my brain with you all because I, I need to improve my communication and my body tone and my range and uh, my dancing too later tonight. But yeah, that, that's my speech. And if, if you guys need any help with uh, with like health tips, let me know. I would love to, uh, to chat. Awesome.